in a number of, of stamps. So these are stamps from uh, Liechtenstein, uh, from uh, Liechtenstein, uh, Switzerland, and France. And there are different ways in which you could represent these these elements. So for air, you can have a flying bird, clouds, or maybe a, a hurricane, and that's how you could represent these elements. These have been represented in different stamps, different countries. This is Portugal. These are stamps from Germany. The four classical elements from Greece. This is a stamp from Switzerland that was specifically issued to promote environmental protection. Again, the four elements that make up the, the world. If you look online for the first periodic table, you come across this. And so this is the first, the original, apparently, periodic table. Of course, the lesson here is that you should not believe everything that you see on the internet, because that's not the first periodic table. And. Uh, then we go to Democritus, the concept of the atom, all these ideas that we cover in general chemistry are part, and so there's a couple of stamps with Democritus there, alchemy, and so there's a number of stamps, I would say maybe 20, 30 stamps related to alchemy. And uh, Paracelsus is uh, one of my favorites. This is a stamp issued in Germany in 1993, 500th anniversary of the birth of Paracelsus. That's the nickname of that's the real name of, of Paracelsus. Obviously, he needed a nickname. And so if you look, do a little bit of research on this stamp, you will see that these uh, symbols that surround Paracelsus are all alchemical symbols. These are all alchemical symbols, substances that the alchemists were using. Some are related to moon, to the moon, or to the planet, symbols that we still use today. That's the case of, say, the moon, silver, and the symbol of the moon, and chemical symbols. And so we keep going. And this is a nice uh, figure I found on the internet that summarizes what uh, the discovery of, of the elements. So there's 12 elements that I think was mentioned earlier in, in, in the conference. The elements for, that were known from antiquity, that nobody knows when or who discovered these elements. And so an important milestone here is, of course, the discovery of, of phosphorus. Okay? And so we go in this big picture of the discovery of the elements. We go from elements that were free in nature, early attempts, lots of electrochemistry, uh, separation techniques, analytical chemistry, lanthanides, and the era of nuclear synthesis of, uh, of new elements. But going back to, to phosphorus, this was a remarkable element. It was the first time that uh, the element was, uh, we know who discovered the element, we know when, we know where. And so this is the picture that was, was shown by uh, earlier in the conference the famous painting, The Alchemist in Search of the Philosopher's Stone by Joseph Wright of, of Derby. And you can see here the glowing phosphorus being really coming to, to light. And so this is uh, Geoffroy's affinity table from 1718. I would say a very early attempt to organize substances uh, according to maybe some affinity, some similarities. Very early attempt to do that. I think uh, uh, chronologically speaking, we can mention Joseph Priestley here, one of the discoverers of oxygen, a uh, US stamp with, with Priestley. Of course, we need to mention at the same time Sheila and Lavoisier, who were also involved in the discovery of oxygen independently. They have all appeared on stamps. And this uh, discussion, the precedence or who should really be credited for the discovery of oxygen was uh, beautifully uh, explained in this uh, play, the play Oxygen by, by uh, Carl Gerasi and, and Rolf Hoffman. If you get the chance to read this play, it's a wonderful story for, for anyone in this, in this room. All right, so then uh, the element, the discovery of new elements sort of accelerates so we look at you know, cobalt, platinum, nickel. By 1800, there were 34 elements known. And so that's when maybe Davy comes into picture, or Dalton starts really coming into, into the, the story. And so and, uh, I'll show you some examples. This stamp from Romania shows uh, Müller von Reichenstein, who discovered tellurium. 
Tellurium was the only element to be discovered in Romania. That's why they have it in a stamp from Romania. It was discovered in the central part, in the region of Transylvania, in, in Romania. The only stamp being discovered in, uh, in Romania. Then we have Johann Gadolin, who discovered yttrium, the element gadolinium, of course, was named after gadolin, but he discovered yttrium and appears on a stamp here from Finland. Vokelan discovered chromium and beryllium, a French, a French chemist. Then we can look at Humphrey Davy, master of the alkali and alkaline earth metals. We can look at uh, Berzelius, usually credited with the discovery of cerium, selenium, silicon, and, and thorium. So this discovery of the elements accelerates uh, in these years. We've mentioned, we've seen already about triads and Dobereiner at the conference, so I don't really need to repeat how the triads work. But here's a stand with Dobereiner that is not really honoring his triads, but his other claim to fame, which is the invention of this lighter, Dobereiner's lighter, very dangerous contraption because you have to carry this container, glass container, with some uh, reservoir of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid will react with a little bar of zinc, and the hydrogen gas that was generated will instantaneously catch fire in the presence of this finely divided platinum powder. And so you'll have a, a portable flame, a flame that you could still use or generate when there was uh, rain in the dark. And so it was, it was remarkable. This is before safety matches. And so that's Dobereiner's other claim to, to fame. And so we look at Gmelin. Gmelin, famous organic chemist, appears on a uh, stamp from, from Germany. And we saw earlier today his uh, famous V-shaped uh, periodic sort of periodic table, a step up from Dobereiner because he includes groups of four elements, not only triads, and some sort of organization to, to that. And uh, Mendeleev, 1969, the centennial of the periodic table, 50 years ago, and so this is a souvenir sheet with, uh, from, from Russia with the original manuscript of the periodic table which I think is very interesting. You can see the date, February 17th, 1869. We've seen these pictures in this original manuscript of the periodic table. And uh, Mendeleev, of course, has a strong presence in, in postage stamps. I'll get that, to that in just a second. This is the German version of that 1869 periodic table. We've heard the story already of the three elements whose uh, existence and properties Mendeleev predicted. And uh, we've seen, of course, that gallium, scandium, and germanium were all discovered within 17 years. More specifically, it was uh, Lecoq de bois boudrin Nilsson, and, and Clemens Winkler who discovered gallium, scandium, and, and germanium. Now, to this story, it turns out that uh, in his lifetime, Clemens Winkler met Mendeleev. I'm sure they were talking about germanium. And so here's a, a card that was prepared in Germany, 1886. It was the centennial of the discovery of germanium. And there's a picture of the meeting Mendeleev and Winkler had in Berlin in the year 1900. And so that was a remarkable meeting, and it all, uh, all appears on this, on this card. These are the first stamps for Mendeleev. It's a set of four stamps issued in Russia, 1934, the centennial of his birth. Very nice uh, set of stamps. Mendeleev, of course, has appeared on many stamps. And these are also from Russia, 1951, 1957, a more recent one, 1969. And this was from 2009, that's in the 175th anniversary of, of his birth. And now uh, stamps, uh, Mendeleev has been issued in stamps from other countries, some more unusual maybe than others. I'm not surprised about maybe Bulgaria or Poland, but when we have Macedonia, North Korea, if that surprises you, you will be even more surprised that Mendeleev has been honored in a number of stamps from Africa. And so this really surprises me because these stamps have no connection, these countries have no connection with Mendeleev. But we look at Chad, and Malawi, Djibouti, and Togo, all with, with 
men that they have. And uh, Gabon, that's a pretty nice large one in 2010. Ivory Coast, 2013. This is a pretty nice uh, sheet of uh, stamps because I wanted to point out an interesting detail here. This periodic table that you see here in the background with samples of the elements appears to be very nice. It is very nice and very interesting, but it's unusual because it shows two elements whose names and symbols were not really officially validated by IUPAC. What you see here is Kurchatobium and Harnium. And uh, according to IUPAC, elements 104 and 105, of course, are officially known as Rutherfordium and Daphnium. And so it's unusual that they selected this periodic table with those symbols for, uh, for this, this uh, stamp, Ivory Coast. Talking about uh, Ivory Coast, that's more, 2016, also Ivory Coast, very unusual triangular stamp. Ivory Coast, again, another pair of stamps. And so, where is Ivory Coast anyway, right? And so I had to look that up. And so Ivory Coast there is there. It's in the southern coast of West Africa, right? So big fans of Mendeleev in Ivory Coast. <laughs> and uh, in 2017, Sierra Leone also had a stamp, of, a, a sheet of four stamps for Mendeleev. And uh, what is unusual about this sheet, it has some elemental symbols and that's all okay. But two of these stamps show the incorrect symbol for Copernicium and the correct symbol for Copernicium. So it's almost like they wanted to play it safe and they included both symbols and hoping that at least one was correct. And of course, the symbol of Copernicium is, is CN. So why they included CP, uh, that's, I have no idea. And that's 2017. And this is one of my favorite stamps. Is the only stamp really dedicated to the periodic table, not to Mendeleev explicitly. Of course, it says the periodic table of, of Mendeleev here, but I like this stamp for a number of reasons. First of all, it shows the different blocks in the periodic table with different colors, which reminds us maybe of a Mondrian painting, the S, B, D, and F blocks. It shows, of course, in white, here, the holes for the elements that were predicted by, by Mendeleev, that's the case, of course, of scandium, gallium, and germanium, but also technetium, right, eka manganese, which took a lot longer to be synthesized in 1937. But that, uh, the existence of an element below manganese in the periodic table was one of the original predictions of, of Mendeleev. And there's even more. This stamp was designed by a good friend of mine, Javier Garcia Martinez, who is a chemist. He's a chemist in Spain, does research and publishers. Uh, but he was involved in the design of this stamp. And incidentally, he, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was elected as IUPAC vice president. And so that's, uh, he's been involved in IUPAC for a number of years, and he did this as, as a side thing, which is remarkable. All right, and so the discovery of elements con continues. Uh, von uh, Belsbach discovered, uh, was involved with, with the lanthanides. We can see uh, Henri Moissan discovered fluorine in 1886. Uh, Ramsey, of course, master of the noble gases. And, uh, and so by the turn of the century, I think this is the 1904 periodic table, what this, uh, was a big, big improvement in this periodic table where we can see already the presence of the noble gases in the periodic table. Group zero on the left, not on the right, but it's, it's getting there. Uh, there's also the presence now, of course, 1904, the presence of scandium, gallium, and germanium. And there are some other details. There's a couple of things that are not right in this periodic table, but progress was, was being made. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, beginning of the 20th century, so we have to mention Marie Curie, the discovery of radioactivity. Of course, she received, she shared the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903 with her husband Pierre and Henri Becquerel, that was the discovery of radioactivity. Perhaps more important, more relevant for us, is the discovery, of course, of polonium and radium, both discovered the same year, 1898 and uh, for which she received, uh, by herself, 
the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911. And so there are lots and lots of stamps with Marie Curie, about 120 different stamps. It's, of course, a well-recognized icon in science. And uh, their daughter, they had two daughters, Eve, who became a writer and wrote the first biography of, of uh, her mother, and uh, Irene, or Irene. And she married uh, Frederick Joliot. They were both also nuclear physicists. And they received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1935 for the synthesis of radioactive elements. So that was part of, I guess, the family, the family tradition. And so directly related to this is, of course, the work on nuclear fission by Otto Hahn and Liz Meitner. Both should be credited, should have been credited for nuclear fission. Uh, only Hahn received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1944. It's a well-known injustice in the history of, of Nobel Prizes. But that work on nuclear fission, of course, 1938-39, uh, is closely related a couple of years later to the discovery of, of plutonium. Uh, Glenn Seaborg at UC Berkeley uh, discovered the element of plutonium. And so shared a Nobel Prize in 1951 with Edwin Macmillan for Discovery of a number of transuranium elements. Now, what is interesting about this story, and a lot has been written about Seaborg, is that the name of the element plutonium, of course, was named after Pluto. Right? And there was uh, Neptune, there was uranium, Neptunium. Those have been used for names of elements, and then it came plutonium. And so he named it. He named the, the element after after Pluto. Now that planet or dwarf planet or former planet Pluto was discovered in 1930 by the American astronomer Clyde Tombo, who appears here. And uh, what I have in my collection is a very remarkable cover that was uh, produced in 1991. It was the 50th anniversary of the discovery of plutonium. And so it's here, December of 1991, a postmark from Berkeley, California and the original signatures of both Glenn Seaborg and Clyde Tombo. So it's all related to Pluto and, and plutonium. It's a very nice item. And I couldn't really complete this story without telling you about DAVNA, the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. It has appeared on a number of stamps, I would say seven or eight stamps. These are just three of them. This one issued in Hungary, 1960. It was the 10th anniversary of the beginning of, of the Nuclear Research Institute. Poland, 1976. Russia, 1976. 20th anniversary of the, of the center. There have been stamped uh, envelopes. That's the 25th anniversary, the, the 50th anniversary, all related to Dabna. And so we arrived to 2012, that's the periodic table, the IUPAC periodic table in 2012, and where we started looking at these recent additions to the periodic tables. Here's where we can look at Copernicium, Flerovium, and Livermorium, these re relatively recent additions to the periodic table. Elements, of course, named after Copernicus, after the Flerov Laboratory of Nuclear Reactions at the JINR and the Lawrence Livermore uh, Laboratory. And so, interestingly, Flerov has his own stamp. This was issued in 2013. It was the centennial of his birth. And so Flerov and the element 114 appear on this stamp from, from Russia. And, uh, now we arrive to the 2017, the current version of the periodic table. A lot has, of course, been written about these four, the latest, the last four elements to be added to the periodic table. And so Nihonium was uh, explained a couple of days ago, uh, but I was surprised that the presentation did not show this stamp. There's a beautiful stamp that was uh, issued for uh, Riken and the uh, discovery of, of uh, Nihonium. Really nice stamp if you look at the details. It starts with really the synthesis of the element. Nihonium was prepared by bombarding a bismuth 209 target with zinc 70 isotopes. 
And so that generates new, uh, nihonium-113, element-113, and a series of alpha decays lead to rontanium, magnarium, borium, and so forth. The whole radioactive decay of nihonium is shown on this tank. It's a remarkable stuff. And uh, Moscovium, uh, named after Moscow, of course, uh, not the element itself, but this is a standard that shows, of course, Moscow. Tennessee is was named after the state of Tennessee in the in the U.S. And uh, there's no stamp for Tennessee, but we come pretty close. I will show you this nice. This is a stamp that was issued in the Czech Republic, 2016. It was for the 60th anniversary of, of Dubna. And so what is interesting about this is the first day cover. The first day cover, this is 2016, shows the electronic structure of un un septium, right? That's the temporary IUPAC name for element 117. And the symbol UUS appears here in the center of this electron configuration. So that's for the element that now we know as, as tennessee. Last but not least, of course, that's Oganesson and Yuri Oganesian. A very nice stamp, again, Californium and Calcium, leading to uh, the element, Oganesson, which decays to Livermorium, Fleurobium, Copernicium, and so lots of lots of information contained in a stamp like, like this. I want to really uh, wrap up my presentation with a recent update, stamps related to the International Year of the Periodic Table. And so the first one was issued January 2nd of this year in uh, Algeria. Uh, this stamp shows, of course, the IYPT logo, a kind of a predictable design, but still we should be proud of that first stamp issued this year. Uh, the stamp issued in Spain a week later, January 9th, is probably my favorite. It has a lot of meaning. It's not really just a periodic table, but these three elements in particular, vanadium, tungsten, and platinum, you have to really do a little bit of research, maybe be inspired by this stamp, to realize that the connections of these three elements in particular to Spain. That's the case of uh, vanadium, which was discovered by the, the scientist Andres Manuel del Rio while exploring Mexico. But that's a scientist that was born in, in Spain. We have the case of the Deluyar brothers who discovered tungsten or wolfram, as they like to say in, in, in Spain. In Spain, that's the only element that was discovered in Spain within the country of, of Spain. And then we, of course, have Antonio de Ulloa, an explorer and, and scientist who uh, discovered platinum, at least is what people describe as the modern or the European discovery of platinum in, in the, what today is part of Ecuador in, in South America. And so that's the connections of this really nice stamp to, uh, of this stamp with the, the elements. And uh, to April 12th, there was a really nice uh, looking stamp issued in Kyrgyzstan. And that's kind of an unusual country, but it's a very nice stamp. Chemical symbols, Mendelevian, of course, Xenon, the logos. Then we get to Moldova. Very nice stamp that shows a Rubik's cube with, with chemical elements. I think it's a pretty nice, uh, nice design. Uh, much uh, more recently, June 3rd, this was issued, this time was issued in Hungary. It shows again the manuscript of uh, the periodic table and so a very nice uh, stamp as well. Much more recently, June 24th, Bulgaria issued this stamp with uh, the periodic table and Mendeleev in the background. And, uh, and just four days ago, so I don't really have this stamp, I just got the pictures online. Just July 24th, two stamps and this souvenir sheet were all issued in Portugal. And so it remains to be seen which other countries will honor the international year, the periodic table with, with stamps later on this, this year. And so with that, I just want to thank again the organizers, the host, Itmo University, and these are the covers of my two favorite books on the periodic table. Eric Sherris, of course, who is, who is here, and a well-organized team by Michael Gordon. And so with that, I'll be more than happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.